let's go ahead and bring this stuff into uh, our architectural project. So we can start off with our MOLI in here. I'm going to load into project, and I'm going to load that into, uh, in our case here, 16 begin. And I'm just going to control tab and go to my panel, and I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to load into project. And it's going to be important that you save before you load in a project. Uh, that way you have your complete uh, elements put in place there. So. so what we could do is we can actually start off by maybe selecting this one we have here. And I'm going to edit type. And I'm going to go ahead and create a special type of curtain wall system that I can la later reference and use later. And I'm going to call this one a spider clip curtain wall. And once I have that in place, I'm going to say OK. And it should take care of that for me right up here. So now let's see if we can't load any of these elements, uh, start loading them into our system here. So you remember when we were working with the system before, we had the ability to kind of choose our mullions and our panels. Well, now that we created those elements, we can now do that here. So let's start with our curtain panel. Let's see if we can't locate our curtain panel with steel spider clips. And there we go. So I'm going to say OK there. And let's see if we can't get our mullions. We may not have those in place. And it looks like we don't have those in place. So we need to go ahead and get that taken care of really quick. So for now, I'm going to say OK. And you should see some spider clip, our spider clip panels load in here. Now you'll notice a few things. We've got horizontal mullions, or old mullions. We're going to make that change there. But you can see that these pieces here, I'm going to click on a piece here have some issues and we've got to make some additional adjustments to make this stuff fit properly but the key is we're going to start bringing elements in so we can see what adjustments we need to make so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to families and we're going to get our mullions loaded and we're going to go look for some curtain wall mullions we're going to go rectangular and what we need to do under this rectangular I'm going to right click on rectangular and I'm going to create a new type so we're going to call this one 4 inch by 6 inch steel to make it just a little bit different than what we know is going on here so I know exactly what I'm looking for. Then I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to right click on that one we just created and we're going to go to, now you'll only see part of my menu here, the rest of my screen blocks it off, but if you go down you'll see type properties, go ahead and click on that. Now, once we're in type properties, what we need to do next is make an adjustment to this uh, area here. So side one and side two, right now, if you think about this, uh, if you add these two together, you're going to get two and a half here. And we want these two to add up to equal the width of our mullion, in our case, which is four. So I'm going to change those to two inches. Same thing with this one, two inches. And I'm also going to come up here and I'm going to locate tube steel, my 4x6 here. And I'm going to say OK. And now I can actually come back up here. We'll select on our, our wall system here. I'm going to edit the type and I'm going to see if we can't locate those mullions. There they go. So we're going to take care of only the verticals because we only want vertical structure in this case. So I have those selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my horizontals. So I'm going to say none. Same thing here. We'll say none. And one more time, we'll say none here. We'll say apply and OK. We're going to delete those uh, horizontal mullions. That's what that message was from. It's just a Revit letting us know that we need to get rid of those uh, horizontals. So I'm going to say OK here. And now when I zoom in, you can see we have our mullions in place in our panels and this thing's really starting to come to life and starting to look exactly how we want it to look but we still have a few adjustments we need to make so one adjustment I'm gonna make is I'm gonna go ahead and change the spacing on my overall system and let's just say we want this to be five feet fixed distance so fixed distance five feet here fixed distance five feet there actually we're not, we're not even gonna have a horizontal grid anyway so we're we're okay there so let's try this one more time I got a little ahead of myself there so I'm gonna click on this we'll say edit type 
and the fixed distance we'll go ahead and keep that the same and we'll go just go ahead and put in five there anyway say apply and okay so there we go all right so things are starting to come together a little better now we're having these uh, nice square panels in place so what we do need to do next uh, now that we have this kind of started is I want to go back to my curtain panel system and we're gonna make some adjustments we're gonna need to actually make some offsets uh, within each panel to kind of make to make sure that all of our pieces line up properly and we'll actually take care of that in the next lesson so I'll meet you in the next level all spacing here and it's about two inch spacing issue we're having there so we need to make an adjustment there and we also need to have this mullion position in the proper space so if I jump to plan view I think you can really see what I'm talking about so this actually needs to be connected to this flat part of our, our connection piece back here so we're gonna have to offset this and we have a couple of other elements or adjustments we're going to need to make as well. So what we'll do is we'll actually start off with our uh, glass panel with spider clips on it. So I'm going to control tab until I get to that window or that project. So now what we need to do is we need to actually offset these by a distance and assign a parameter to that offset and make sure that we take these pieces and lock them into their uh, location. So let's go on ahead and get started with the offset. So I'm going to go with my, actually we'll go with the, select your glass panel, edit the extrusion, now do the offset of one foot, and do not select copy. So if it is selected, un get rid of that check mark out of copy. And then we want to actually set that outward. So we're going to remove constraint. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll just... Uh, Offset that one outward as well, and go ahead and remove that constraint. Green check mark to finish that command. So now let's realign our elements, and then we'll snap them in place. But let's first make a parameter. So we'll say add parameter, and this one's going to be called that vertical offset parameter. So we'll say vertical offset, and we'll access that a little bit later. I'm going to say OK, apply, and OK. So now I can use my align tool. So we're going to go from the edge of here and I want to line that vertically here so we'll remove constraint and lock so I'm going to do the same do the same thing here edge of glass center point lock and I'm gonna come over here and do the same so we'll say edge of glass with the center point remove constraint lock last but not least we'll do this one remove constraint and lock so now I'm gonna create a dimension and then we'll add that parameter to it I'm just going to drop that down right there. Do the same thing here. And now we'll select our dimensions and we'll add a couple parameters to it. Vertical offset. Perfect. All right. So now at this point, it will be wise to go on ahead and save this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this element. We'll load it into project, load it into 17, begin here. Now I'm going to go ahead and overwrite the existing version and its parameter values. And you can see we've got some adjustments. So, so far, so good. A couple more adjustments we've got to make here. So let's go ahead and reposition this mullion while we're here. So I'm going to tab, select, edit its type. And we're going to go ahead and give it an offset of 6.25 so that it aligns properly with the clip. Make sure you put inches in there. So I'm going to say apply and OK, which is exactly what we want. So now last change we need to make is we're going to come over here to my families in my project browser. And we're going to look for our panels. Curtain panel, curtain panel. There we go. We'll come here to our glass panel with spider clip. I'm going to right click. Go to type properties at the bottom. And we're going to locate that vertical offset parameter we created. I'm going to type in two inches, apply, OK, and you should see everything aligned properly. So now when we're looking at this in plan view, you can see our glass fits nicely inside these clips and the clip connects to the structure. So in 3D view, here's what we have. Perfect. So far, so good. Looking good. So we have one more thing I want to add to this, and I kind of saved that a little bit later um, it's going to be 
our little uh, rubber stoppers with a gasket piece that actually goes in between each uh, piece of glass because you know in real life this kind of a panel would have there would be some extreme leakage if we didn't have some kind of weather strip or something in between each panel here so we're going to go ahead and get that added and we'll do that in the next lesson but I would definitely want you to see the improvements we made here so we were able to kind of connect all the pieces in uh, bring them all into the environment but you saw that we had to adjust uh, the clips we had to make an adjustment to our panel so that it does flex uh, depending on what's going on with our panel design but we also had to create an offset uh, or add an offset to our mullion system so we're making really good progress now and we're going to add the final steps for the storefront system in the next lesson where we'll go ahead and add the uh, glass or the rubber stopper edge for the uh, any leakage in this glass system so to do that we basically just need to go to our glass panel uh, add an extrusion that's equal to the width of the desired gasket or rubber stopper uh, put that into our glass panel and just reload it in so let's go ahead and get that going so I'm gonna control tab till I get to this glass panel and let's start creating our, uh, our extrusion here so I'm gonna go extrusion I'm gonna pick lines and I'm gonna pick my edge and I'm gonna lock pick the edge and lock edge and lock one more time over here edge and lock so now we're going to do an offset so now as far as the thickness of this gasket go with maybe three quarters of an inch but I want that thickness to be shared with the two pieces of glass that actually come together because you remember they're basically touching each other so what we can do is divide that three quarters of an inch by two and get three eighths and that'll be the dimension we use for this offset so we'll say three eighths of an inch now I'm just going to offset this inward and once I have all those lines placed we'll then use our trim tool to clean up all our geometry. We want to make sure we have no overlapping lines and we also want to make sure that everything's a closed loop system. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and go right there and boom. So before I hit this green check mark I want to make one more adjustment. I want to actually add a thickness to this. So if we were to hit this green check mark now, Revit would say, hey, I can't make this extrusion. You'll actually get a, a warning there. So what you need to do is tell Revit how thick you want this to be. So right here in your properties window, we want to extrusion end zero, but we want to have our um, we need to make this extrusion start zero, I apologize. But the extrusion end, we need to make sure that's going to be equal to our glass thickness. So I'll say OK. So now I can hit this green check mark and you should now have your extrusion. Now if you got an error warning, as I mentioned, it could be because you didn't go back and make this change here. You've got to put some kind of a value to show the, you know, you're actually extruding something. And we want to make that equal to our glass thickness. So if you, that happened to you, just go back draw your lines, trim everything, get both small rectangles in place, then go to your properties window and make your start offset to zero and your end offset equal to your glass thickness parameter and you should get this here. So now what we could do is we could come here, select your extrusion and I want to apply a material to this. So select it, we'll go to here and right now glass is assigned to it so I'm just gonna make maybe a new a new material here so we're gonna go with Oh, default, we could duplicate this one. We'll rename it. We'll call this one Rubber Gasket. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and come to Appearance and we'll assign a color to it. We'll give it a nice black color. Not too concerned with glossiness or anything like that. We'll come back here to Graphics and do this. Use my Render Appearance to take that on. And I'm just going to call that rubber gasket. We'll say apply, OK. And if once, once I come in here and add color to this, oh, there we go. You should be able to see the black all the way around the edge. Looks like it's not catching at the moment, but we'll make a quick adjustment to that. So let's, we'll, here's what we'll do. We'll actually just save it right here. And all that blue kind of makes things a little overwhelming here. But what we want to do is go ahead and load this back into our project. But make sure you save first. We'll load it into our project. This time we'll go to 18 begin. Override existing and parameters. And you should be able to see that little black edge pop up in there. All right. So you can see we've got some issues here. We've got to go back in and make that additional adjustment here. 
So I'm going to go back to my families, curtain panel with spider clips. I'm going to right click and then again, I'm going to go to type properties here and then change this offset again from one foot to two inches again. And this should fall back into place nicely. Voila. So now when I jump to my 3D view, you can see we've got a really cool looking curtain wall system uh, using those parametric modeling techniques and everything lines up nicely so we were able to kind of do this by highlighting one in place now let's see if we can not draw our own now so we could now I can now come here and I can go to wall see if we can't find our spider clip curtain wall and now I can draw my curtain wall system however I need to so now when I kind of zoom in here you can see what we're working with really cool stuff Pretty neat. I'm, I'm really excited to be able to show you how to actually create this. So there we go. We've learned quite a bit working with curtain wall systems. So we've gone from working with a single pane of glass, single sheet of glass like this, to a piece of glass with just grid lines. We're able to kind of lay out a design for our mullion system using the mullion tool. And we're able to work with the storefront system and manipulate the existing parameters. But not only that, we took it one step further and we created our own parametric customized parts which are our own mullions our own glass panels as well as our own clips and gasket pieces here to create our very own custom very contemporary looking uh, curtain wall system here using a storefront tool so I really hope you learned something here um, this is going to be really powerful it's going to make modeling and designing a lot more exciting and a lot more creative for you if you haven't already been introduced to the parametric modeling stuff so I really hope you learned something and I look forward.